The boat you can see behind me here, I reckon, is the single most interesting motorboat launch at the Dusseldorf Boat Show. And if you stick with me, I will tell you exactly why. It is called the Omicron OT60 and it is built in Greece by Olympic yachts. They have a long history of building sailing boats and now they're building super yachts and this fascinating new motorboat. Now, the reason it is quite so interesting is that it is based around a sailing boat design, but with all the benefits of a long range, comfortable, easy to use motor yacht. Now the hull is designed by uh, Juan K Design they're a very famous sailing boat designer, have designed boats for the America's Cup, for the uh, Ocean Race, Volvo Ocean Race, so really knows his stuff. And if you can see, it is fairly traditional looking vertical stem, or I say traditional looking, more sort of performance sailing boat. So you've got a big bow sprit that keeps the anchor well clear of that vertical bow. You've got a very slender bow, if we look at it from here see and then nice deep cutting edge to help pierce through the waves and then it flares out enormously towards the rear it is absolutely enormously wide it is 60 foot long and over 20 feet wide and you'll get an impression from that once we get to the stern but just briefly show you under here it obviously hasn't got a traditional sailing keel it's just got a shallow skeg and the reason for that is to protect those propellers so that if you do by any chance run aground you're not going to be damaging the propellers it will just sit gently on that little stub keel. They've deliberately kept the wheelhouse relatively low it is all built uh, extremely stiff but very light to maximize fuel efficiency and it is really is supremely efficient it's powered by twin 250 horsepower Yanmar engines for a maximum speed of 16 knots, but cruising at eight knots, it has a 1,000 mile range from a 1,200 litre tank. That is phenomenal for a 60 foot boat. So just 1.21, sorry, 1.2 litres per nautical mile. Astonishing for a boat of this size. Right, I think we're just about able to get on. They very kindly cleared the boat for me. Now then, starting at the stern, you will see there is a big bathing platform here and look how wide it is. It just seems to go on forever. So it's six meters or 20 foot wide. You can really get a feeling of that scale now. Now, being so wide, it also means there's room for a huge tender under there. You can have a 4.2 meter Williams jet tender under here. And very cleverly, this passerelle, you can see that swings out, that doubles as the crane to lift it off. It also, when it's tucked in like that, it actually extends the size of the cockpit. It becomes part of the cockpit itself. And it will swing right round and over the side here too. So that it also acts as a passerelle for a side boarding as well as stern to the quay. Obviously it means you then have a very nice sort of beach club area once you've launched the tender. You've then got the space where you can put your bean bags or freestanding chairs and have a lovely, comfortable beach club. Stepped up into the cockpit. Now check that out. There again is the benefit of that massive beam. You've got a huge, huge cockpit, all very nicely protected under this long overhang. It's all about indoor, outdoor living. You can get uh, canopies that, that go all the way around there, so it effectively becomes a kind of indoor outdoor space but you can enclose it in cold weather but also lovely and shaded and sheltered in a hot sun now here's that passerelle you can see the split line there that's what swings out over here we've got a neat little barbecue grill in the corner and then mirrored dinette so on this side we've got it in the table mode you can see exactly the same over here but this time it's been set up as a sun pad, but lots and lots of seating all the way around here. 
And much like a sailing boat, you've got really wide side decks. So pausing briefly to stop and look, you see you've got an extra external helm station here. Again, ideal in the med when you're mooring stern two, you want to be able to look over exactly how close you are to the quay. Got winches, pop-up cleats, fair leads, and then Dyneema rope grab rails around the side. Again, sort of partly for the aesthetic of a sailing boat aesthetic, but also keeps everything that much lighter. But look how wide these side decks are. I'll show you my feet down there, but there is masses of space along there. One of the sort of inspirations was it was how many people, when they go chartering, they charter catamarans for the space and stability, but they wanted all that plus the volume inside the hull. Flush fitting glass, big opening window here. We'll see that from inside. Little gateway here if you want to step off the side. Another pop-up cleat. And then a big foredeck area here. All very neat. You can see there's no steps or anything to stub your toes on. All the anchoring gear is stored under this little pop-up cover here. And there is that long bowsprit. Now, obviously, that will add a little bit to your berthing bill. But one of the ideas, partly for the aesthetic of looking like a performance sailing boat, also helps mean the anchor drops well clear of that bow. And crucially, there's nothing to go wrong. Most of these vertical bow motorboats have to have some kind of complicated mechanism to make sure that it pushes it out beyond the bow. But having it like that is just much more reliable and simple. Now, big sunbed here, and you'll see it steps up onto the roof. It's not a flybridge up here, it's just a really big sun pad area. Again, they didn't want to make it too top heavy, but you might as well use that roof space for a couple of big sun pads. And you can see there are some solar panels at the back there too. Now, as well as being steps up onto the roof, this will, these will also lift out and slot into place here so that you then have steps over the side if you want to have a side boarding ladder. Now, let's come back into the cockpit. Here we go. I'll show you the engine room in a minute, but let's just have a look inside. Just pause briefly to have a look, see if... Okay, that's just a storage locker for polish and so on. I just wondered if there might be a second helm or third helm station there if you wanted it. Now you can see we've got full lift up windows on both sides, one here and one here, and twin opening doors there. Here in open mode, it's lovely kind of free flow between the two spaces. They all feel like they're connected, but of course it will all close up and then you've got a really secure weatherproof saloon. Now, one of the unusual things that they've done here is to, rather than going for a big saloon on this level, they've actually made it into a kind of bi-level style living area. So we've got relaxed seating up here, hugely deep sofa here. That just gives a very sort of cool, relaxed lounging space. If you want to, you can bring that backrest forward and have a more sort of traditional upright seating space, but very nice and chilled zone in there. Not sure quite why that lifts up does seem to. Lots of lovely detailing in here. Oh, not sure about opening that. And then over on this side, there's a big side, uh, just a side storage unit, side cabinet. We've got a high-low TV pops out of there. Really big windows on both sides, lots of natural light. And again, that's big part of just trying to keep it as open and airy and visible as possible. 360 degree views all the way around. Whether it's open up like this or all closed, you're still gonna get a really, really good view from on board. As well as the windows, we've got overhead hatches, yet more natural light pouring in. You don't get the full effect here inside at Dusseldorf, but you can imagine on a beautiful Mediterranean day, it is gonna feel like you've got astounding views all the way around. Now there's that big opening window in the side, exactly the same over on that side. Here is the helm station. Now this is what I meant by a kind of split level apartment style. So you've got the galley and the main dinette downstairs. But before we go down and look at that, just have a quick look at the helm station. Almost a sort of sailing aesthetic here too. Got a three, three spoke wheel there, a couple of screens. Now this has information on all the systems. You can see we've got a camera set up here. You've got access to all the lighting and fusing. So everything you want to, you can check out 
exactly what's going on, turn everything on, turn it all off from here. There's the throttles for the twin Yamaha, sorry, Yanma engines. And then here, because it's all electronics, they wanted absolute redundancy for everything. So they've got a very simple override system here. If you need to fire up the engines, you can do it from here. All just double security for absolutely everything. So much like sailing boat aesthetic, they wanted the reliability and redundancy so that you're not gonna get caught out because a fuse is gone or your computer is throwing a wobbly. There is always a means of getting things going. Right, now we can drop down onto the lower deck. Beautiful teak steps down here. Now the owner of this boat wanted this kind of matte gray finish. You don't have to have that. It looks very modern, but to be honest, a little bit of carpeting might actually help it make it a, just look a little bit more expensive perhaps. But what is remarkable here is the headroom. Now it is absolutely towering because it's effectively double height saloon. It's almost like a kind of cathedral in here, it's so tall. But it just gives that wonderful open feeling. You've got all that light pouring in. You are kind of connected with the seating area upstairs too, so you never feel completely disconnected. Got a good size dinette here. Probably sit, well, six if you bring down an extra chair there. And then sailing style galley, really seaworthy design. You've got deep fiddles on the surfaces, twin sinks, twin taps, trash can, hob extractor, lots of storage all around. You can see all beautifully done. I won't open them all, but you get the idea. Big fridge freezer on this size, full height, so plenty of chilling space. And then there's a number of options for the layout design. This has the master cabin forward. Let me just see if I can find the light switch there. There we go. So this is the master cabin forward. If you want, you can have two separate cabins here. There is a, a dividing bulkhead down here and you can have two double cabins either side. But in this master configuration, you get fantastic space. And again, check out the number of windows and hatches all the way around here. You've got a round porthole, you've got a forward bow window, you've got, eye, well it's higher than eye level, but deck level screens there, overhead hatches, both of those open. Imagine how lovely this is going to be. Even though you're below deck, you've got masses of natural light, really lovely fit and finish, this natural matte teak, big built-in TV, TV small desk area there. The other thing I really like about this is it's got separate bathroom and head. So if I close that door there, open that one, we've got a separate heads compartment this side. And on the other side, we've got the shower room. Let's see if I can turn those lights on too. There we go. Separate shower room, masses of space keeps it separate so both can be in use at the same time. Really, really clever thinking. Moving back to the VIP cabin, this is on the port side, a couple of steps down. Before we get in there, I just wanted to show you this. So if we pull this open, you can see there are all the breaker switches for the electrics, but because they wanted absolute redundancy, if you pop those two latches there and open, you have full access to all the actual physical wiring here too. And that is the kind of thinking that has gone into this boat. The idea is for it to be used and used hard and have built-in redundancy for everything. Port VIP cabin here. If you have twins forward or the two separate cabins, then this becomes the master cabin. Another really good size full width double bed. That's got to be a king size bed. Looks like it might just taper a tiny bit at the end here. Really good standing headroom in the cabin here. There's a good six, eight inches above my head. I'm six foot one inches. Lots of natural light coming in here too. We've got a window down there. We've got another window there. We've got a hatch there. Good storage. 
everywhere. And access or more storage over here. And access to its own ensuite bathroom as well. Really good size bathroom for a VIP cabin. Separate shower stall, lots of space, lots of storage. And this does have access from another door here too, so that during the daytime, this becomes the day head. So let's come this side, you see same bathroom, but means you don't have to go through the VIP cabin to access it. And then third cabin around the other side, through the galley, down into the guest cabin. Two single beds here, one on the hull side, one on the inside. Full standing and headroom in here too. Look at that, plenty of space again. More good light pouring in here and through the hull side. Plenty of storage above both of the beds and in the bases. And an ensuite bathroom too with a separate shower stall. And I noticed this in the other one too. I just wanted to have a peek under there. Ah, look at that. That's access to some of the seacocks, the technical areas. Love it. So even in the bathroom, they make sure you've got access to everything you need. I've dropped down into the engine room through a hatch in the cockpit. And as befits a category A rated boat, it's really well laid out down here. There's masses of space around the engine, the whole room is extremely well insulated against noise and vibration. The power itself comes out and reverses back under the engine using a V-drive gearbox. And all the thrust is taken on this special rubberized thrust bearing unit that cuts out a lot of the vibration you'd get from a conventional layout. It all makes for a very refined cruising experience. Now, any more details you need to know? Pricing is an obvious one. Now this is not a cheap boat. It is 1.65 million euros ex taxes. Now the reason for that, obviously it's a big boat, but it's also very high tech. So this whole roof section up here, all this superstructure is built out of carbon fiber to keep it as light and fuel efficient as possible. So this whole molding, that roof, all the superstructure, I'm told it weighs just 400 kilos. The hull itself is vacuum infused, but also to save weight, rather than use a thick gel coat, they've actually fared and painted the whole thing. So to make sure, normally when you use a vacuum infusing, you quite often get show through of the actual, uh, the actual fiber material used. But gel coat is heavier and less robust. A full all grip paint system is lighter and tougher. So that is the kind of detail we are talking about. I told you the Omicron OT60 was an interesting boat, and I hope that now you've seen the tour and listened to some of the explanation behind it, you will agree with me. But as ever, do let me know what you make of it in the comments. My name is Hugo Andre. You've been watching Motorboat and Yachting. I'll see you on the next one.